Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and in this short video I'm going to go over the grace notes, the trills, and the eight verses three rhythm in Chopin's Waltz in C sharp minor opus 64 number two this waltz. So the way the video will work is I'm just going to start at the beginning and go chronologically through these ornaments. There's not too many of them but they are tricky. Measure three, we're gonna start. The most important thing is fingering. Because I'm a piano teacher, I have all sorts of versions of this piece, lots of different fingerings, and that's probably the most important thing for these great notes because what might work for my hand might not work for yours. It depends on the size of the hand, how quick are your fingers, can you switch them quickly? How comfortable are you on the black keys? And do you have lots of dexterity or do your fingers feel a little slower? In measures three and four, I actually have four, fingerings to offer you for the first half of each measure and two fingerings to offer you for the second half of each measure. So option one, you're going to have three one on these two black keys and then pinky is going to play the grace note before the beat, by the way, and then four two. This is good because it doesn't allow you to stay on the F sharp. So you have to switch fingers for that and the motion, you'll feel like your hands at an angle this way and then it's going to kind of open up. And then following that, I would suggest the three, two, five, one. I'm only gonna offer you two fingerings for the last part of that measure, three, two, five, one, or one, two, one, five. Now, you could also, number two, instead of having three, one, you could have three, two, and then five, four, two. So you'd really have to pay attention to lifting up that second finger on the F sharp. Or you could also do three, two, five, four, one. So you would have two, one on that. See, for my hand, that one doesn't work very well because I'm feeling very kind of squished in there. If you have more slender fingers or smaller fingers than I do, that might work really well. With that one, you could do the three, two, five, one as well. So fingering number four is gonna be two, one on here. Instead of five with the grace note, four, three one and then you would play two one five one so you just have to make sure to lift that thumb up off of that f sharp so in terms of technique you want to feel that the first one is a down touch down down touch down no matter which fingering you do that grace note's just going to fit in on the way down and then touch down, touch down. Now measure four, same thing. So we could have three, one, five, four, two, just like the beginning. It's actually exact same notes as the other one. You could have three, two, five, four, one, three, two, five, four, two, or two, one, four, three. And then the same ending fingerings as well. Three, two, five, one, or one, I think three, two, five, one is better though. So you don't have that big interval with the thumb. That one you can do more in one motion. So measure seven, again, four ways for the first part. We'll start with three, one, five, four, two. I want you to notice the angle of my hand. I'm angling it this way so I can be a little bit further out on those black keys instead of having my whole hand be in here. And then I have to get squished between here for the bottom note. So. Three, one, five, four, two. That's switching for the D. You could also do three, one, five, four, one, or three, two, five, four, one. So three, one, or three, two. So you get the switching D. Or two, one, where your hand would be a little bit straighter if you do that one, if you look at the angle where the black keys. Again, use the grace note to help you lift up that bottom note. And then like measures three and four, there's just two options for the end of the measure. You could either have three, two, five, one, or two, five, one. Three, two, five, one is a little bit safer for the repetition of the D. Now measure eight, there's just three ways for the first part. Again, two ways for the second. Our three ways for part one are going to be similar. Three, one, five, four, two. 
or three, two, five, four, one. So kind of the opposite. Three, one, five, four, two, or three, two, five, four, one. That one's, you've got to really think about the thumb moving into the black if you do three, two, five, four, one. Or you could just keep your hand more straight and do two, one, four, three, one. And then the ending two notes are either three, two, five, one, or two, one, five, one. I think the three, two, five, one is a little safer than two, one, five, one. But if you have a quick thumb, two, one, five, one is just fine. So for measure 30, there's one choice of fingering, and that happens to be because we have to hold that C sharp the whole measure. I'm going to start on beat three, the measure before you'll see that four, five. That means you're going to switch from finger four to five, then one here, one, four, three, two, four, three, two, three, then you can get off. We have to hold that C sharp the whole way because it provides the harmony once the pedal is released. The other thing I want to mention is sometimes we can make an artistic choice about the trill. This is a three note trill, whether to put it on the beat or before the beat. This trill happens on an and, so we're going to play it on the and. I'm going to do it slowly, then I'm going to do it with the pedal. So I'm going to start right hand, no pedal, measure before, five, four, five, switch, one, four, three, two, four, three, two, three, four, the thumb comes off. And you really want to feel a down motion on that two. Down, light, light, down. Now here it is with the pedal. Switch. So again, in measure 80, we have the three note trill. I have three possible fingerings for you. I'm going to include the note after as part of the fingering. So we could have two, four, three, two. We could have two, four, three, one, or we could have two, three, two, one. All have different benefits based on how big your hand is, how comfortable you are up here, how fast your fingers are. So I'm going to go through all of all three of those fingerings. But the other thing I wanted to mention, because this trill happens on the beat, we can be artistic and make a choice. Do we want to play the trill before the beat or on the beat? So let me go through all of those fingerings. I'll do it before and then I'll do it on. So before two, four, three, two would sound like this. Before two, four, three, one. Four, two, three, two, one. Before I do the on the beat ones, I want to mention when you do two, four, three, two, your hand scoots in a little bit more. So you're staying a little bit more in here. If we do two, four, three, one, we're going to stay a little bit further out here. And same thing for two, three, two, one. So let's do on the beat, all three of those. We're going to have. Then we'll end with one this time. And two, three, two. Personally, I prefer the trill to go before the beat, but you will hear it both ways. So choose what works for your hand and your ear. What do you like better? Moving forward, we're going to address the rhythm here in measure 84. You have eight notes in the right hand and three notes in the left hand. Before we even talk about <clears throat> how to do this, I want to mention that there are, are different versions of this piece. So not every version has an eight against three. One version that I'll show you in just a second has it split up into two and then a triplet, triplet, triplet. So lots of different versions. So what we're going to do first is just lock in the fingering for the eight. Five, four, one, two, three, one, five, four, three, two, one octave. So just get that solid. By the way, one version has three, one, two, a grace note there. So if you want to know exactly how the hands are relating to each other, you can look at the little chart above and 
because we've got eight notes in the right hand and three notes in the left hand, their common denominator is 24. And so you might just do this a couple times just to feel how they move together. So the subdivision of eight in, in 24, each note is gonna get three subdivisions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You see the problem with doing this because there's so many syllables, it's hard to say them in rhythm. But nonetheless, the left hand would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So too many syllables. However, it's still good to, to try it this way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 together. So at least when you say it out loud, you can feel that the 9 and 10, so that D flat and the F are almost at the same time. And then same thing here, they're almost at the same time. Okay, so once you find the, once you try the 24, here's a couple other things you can do. You can split your brain in half and get in muscle memory how many notes are going in a certain period of time with the right hand first and with the left hand. So what I suggest first is put your metronome really slow and let's try to just get in muscle memory a whole measure's worth of right hand and left hand. So right now I'm putting my metronome on 30. So that would be a tempo of like. About that tempo. Okay, so a little bit under tempo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my left hand. One, two, three, one, two. I'm going to do it a bunch of times. Maybe just three times for the video. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand. I'm going to try to fit eight of them in that one measure's worth of metronome. So I'm going to put a little accent on my third finger, which is the fifth note. So I'm organizing it into two groups of four notes. One. One more time. The reason I'm putting that accent there is because if I play the first note and the fifth note, that is where the two against three actually happens with the left hand. Then I'm gonna just try to split my brain and play both figures at the same time. My right hand's on automatic. The other thing you can do is play in the rhythm on your phone or whatever, turn the metronome on, and then try to play the other hand with it. And that is an also really helpful way to try to do this. But most importantly, please know that this is a complex rhythm and it takes a long time to master these sorts of rhythms. One day it just clicks. It might not be the first time you try it, it might be a couple weeks, but keep at it because it's worth working towards you can have that flexible feel for this measure. Our final measure is measure 88 because then all the rest of them just repeat. It's a three note grace note, happens on beat one. So I have two fingerings for you and this is one you could make the artistic choice before the beat or on the beat. So the fingering for this one, measure 88, you could either do one, two, three, two. If you use one, two, three, two, you risk a little bit that two not lifting up and replaying or you can do one two four three that one's a little safer i can tell that i learned one two three two when i play this because i don't want to do one two four three but i actually think one two four three is better that's my muscle memory kicking in so one two four three notice your hand's going to kind of switch directions when you do that so I'll go through both ways. First, before the beat with both fingerings, and I'm gonna start a little bit before. So I'll start on beat three in measure 86. Before the beat. Now 
I'll do one, two, four, three before the beat. And now on the beat, one, two, three. On the beat, one, two, four. So one other thing I want to mention about the grace note, you're going to feel down and then this is going to be played kind of on the up, down, up, down, up. So the two and the three and the two and the four are going to be very light. You really want to play them on the tips of your fingers. Sometimes on the black key, our hands want to go more flat, but not in this case. Find the grip point of those and keep your fingers very focused. Make sure that joint is not caving. Down, and then it comes up, or down. The one, two, four, three is probably more secure. The rest of the piece, we just repeat what we've had before. It's an ABA form. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I love it if you reach out to me in the comments. I love to hear what you're working on, or if you have any questions or suggestions for videos, I'd love to hear it. As always, thanks for watching.